To quote Barack Obama, yes, we can. This is not a political statement. This is a, a statement of belief in the power of the risen Christ working through us. That's, that's what Paul drew on. That's what Paul counted on. Yes, we can. Paul gives us a hint when he describes the gospel message as the unsearchable riches of Christ. What we have to share is not an advertising slogan. It's something of great value and of great power. It's often inconvenient and difficult to share the gospel. A missionary in Africa was once asked if he really, and this is not us, someone doing an entirely different work than us, but a missionary in Africa was once asked if he really liked what he was doing. His response was shocking. Do I like this work? He said, no, my wife and I don't like the dirtiness of where we are. We have reasonable, refined sensibilities. We do not like crawling into these dirty huts and through all the garbage and, and goat dung, but, but is a man to do nothing for Christ he does not like? God pity him if not. Liking or disliking has nothing to do with it. We have orders to go and we go. Love is what motivates us, said the missionary. Love is what constrains us. And we know that life, let alone serving Christ, life itself is full of a lot of stuff and people and situations that you and I may not like. But as we serve God, as we persevere through life's difficulties and troubles, we need to rely on the fact that God has a master plan. God has something big in mind. Verses 9 through 11 talk about this, and I want to focus on, on verse 9. Flick this. Uh, oh, there we go. It's still there. Uh, to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery. And, and, and Paul goes on to talk, to go in more detail about the mystery. But let's focus on this, this phrase in verse 9 to make plain to everyone. The administration of this mystery. Everyone loves a mystery. For the plane ride home from uh, Providence, Rhode Island, connecting in Philadelphia to Los Angeles, before I got on the plane, I went to my mother's bookshelf, and she's got this beach house, you know, a few blocks back from the beach, which she's thinking of selling, and it's, it's sad for all of us, but she probably needs to do it. Well, on this, on this bookshelf, all these paperback books from years gone by, I picked up this slim volume from the bookshelf on my way out the door, Friday, the rabbi slept late. And if you know this book, if you know the Rabbi Small series, oh man, written in the 60s, it's just winsome and engaging. Friday, the, ra the rabbi slept late. And, and the other books in the series are Monday, the rabbi took off. On uh, one fine day, the rabbi brought, bought a cross. Tuesday, the rabbi saw red. And someday, the rabbi will leave which a lot of his congregation was hoping that someday he would leave. And the rabbi gets wrapped up in these little mysteries, and it's told in just, just a few pages. So the Rabbi Small series, I recommend. Why do we love mysteries? Well, we like the adventure of finding out what really happened. And isn't it true that we like in a good mystery both the finding out and the adventure. The adventure takes up most of the book. We only find that at the end, and that's all part of the mystery. And that's part of what makes Christian gospel ministry so wonderful that we get to tell people from the poorest widow to the grandest, uh, flip the slide please, rulers and authorities. Okay, that's in, uh, there we go, verse 10 made known to rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, we get to tell people this marvelous adventure mystery that begins in Genesis is climaxed in Christ and ends in Revelation. The mystery of the gospel that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's the gospel in a nutshell. And we get to share that with people and that's the greatest privilege on earth to share that great and wonderful news with people. That, that it, and it's not just a statement, it's a whole sweeping saga of how God worked in and through his people. So it's a great big mystery adventure. Paul was a servant in some ways. He was like a soldier of the gospel, fully available to the gospel ministry no matter what. One afternoon, the Christian author Patsy Claremont got on an airplane. She was sitting next to a young man, and Patsy wrote about this encounter. 
She, wrote, she writes, I had already observed something about this young man when I was being seated. He called me ma'am. Tip off right there. At the time I thought, well, either he thinks I'm really, really old, or he's from the south where they still teach manners. Any southerners here? Okay, a few, yeah. Or he's in the service. And Patsy writes, I decided the latter was most likely. So I asked, are you in the service? And he said, yes, ma'am. What branch? Marines. Hey, Marine, where are you coming from? Operation Desert Storm, ma'am. No kidding? Desert Storm? How long were you there? I asked. A year and a half. I'm on my way home. My family will be at the airport. Patsy then commented that he must have thought about returning to his family and home many times when he was in the Middle East. Oh, no, ma'am, he replied. We were taught never to think of what might never be, but only to be fully available right where we were. The soldier was taught never to think about coming home, and, and, they, and they do, of course, but this is what they train you for, never to think about what might never be, but only to be fully available right where we are. And that's what Paul was about, and that's what gospel ministry is about. To, to, not let, to not let ourselves get distracted and off focus, but to really focus on serving the Lord, on gospel ministry. You and I are, are servants, then, of God and his gospel message. You and I present ourselves to Jesus fully available to love and reach people, people like us, but especially people not like us, people who are different from us, the Gentiles. And, and so when I lift the bread and when we say, broken for you, when I lift the cup and when we say, shed for you, and we sing and pray and know that the risen Jesus is here among us, that's the gospel. Communion is enacting the gospel through these common elements. And I am a servant to that gospel message. And I hope you are too. As Paul wrote in verse 13, don't be discouraged because of suffering in service to the gospel. Whether it be loneliness or setbacks or whatever, because these setbacks, in a crazy mixed up way, are to your glory because God takes them and works for them and redeems them. Rather, as verse 12 says, now and in prayer and at the Lord's table, let us approach God with freedom and with confidence. By God's grace, we, like Paul, are servants of the gospel, receiving and then spreading the flame of God's love in Jesus Christ. Amen. We move on now to a communion song.